In this episode of At The Stark's Table, we are diving into raising little children. Top tips for how to get your child falling in love with Jesus, being obedient, discipline and boundaries, the hierarchy of God, all you need to know coming up in this episode of At The Stark's Table. to another episode of At The Stark's Table with me, Emma Stark, and our fabulous, feisty, friendly, fiery, I've run out of Fs. Females. Females! Yeah. Is that the more obvious? Yeah. And again, I'm joined by <laughs> the joy. <laughs> run out of Fs. <laughs> Is that not a right thing to say? No. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> You're very welcome to this slight giddy girly party. And we do we start with all the G's now. <laughs> okay, great giddy girly party. Jessica is with me, my 19-year-old superstar, yeah. who keeps me right on all <laughs> things fashion. She yeah. says to me, actually, you say to me that my fashion improved. When you hit teenage years. This is so true, but you've never admitted to that. No. So thank you. No, 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 I'm not admitted to it. I'm not admitted to it. <laughs> this is your opinion that, that when you got fashionable, it rubbed I, off. I mean, I could probably agree. Oh, no! Don't don't agree with her. Well, every time we agree on your shoes and which ones we want to throw out, don't we? <gasps> it's like one of our favourite conversations. Oh, which of my shoes you want to throw yeah, out? There are some. But let's oh! be honest. Oh! The ones, oh! The ones that you have bought recently are spectacular. Oh, the, the, do, but, yeah. do, do you like the ones I've But you have uh, some yes, previous... Those. Those Excuse me, you now have to see. These are great. Oh, they wow, almost yeah. look like they're, bridal they shoes. They are great, yes. Yeah, they're amazing. Yes. They also America, stink. oh, they do stink. That's because I was on a flight. That, sorry, guys. I, I was on an airplane this morning and I've been up for hours. And I've had a lot of caffeine. Anyway, speaking on smell. children influencing parents. Oh, right. Okay, no. This is parents influencing children. This, I didn't get to... Int I only introduced you and not them. Oh, I'm sorry. Going, the, the wonderful Ali McFarlane. Woo! Beautiful in every way. A friend you need on your side. Yeah. Oh. Similarly <laughs> with guy. Debs, who we love doing life with. Yes. Yeah. Amazing Debs. Okay, Debs, I really feel like you are our expert for this yes. because we are talking about raising littles. I hope you see our order, the dating game, yeah. you know, pre-marriage, making your marriage pop. Clearly, in our coaching, you will have made your marriage pop. And now we're raising littles. Yes. Uh, we are going to come on if to... If all has gone well. If all has gone well, <laughs> this is now what you need to know. So we will talk about raising teenagers and raising adults. And, and there is one for the singles on navigating friendships. Don't worry. Yeah. We have all bases covered. And actually, there's lots over the episodes to talk about. Uh, you can, do you know what? If you want to hear us talk about something that we've not yet hit, mm -hmm. type it in the yes. comments. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't promise, but as we seem to be a no holes barred group of women, you probably get a fairly good comment from us on most things. Um, I'm sure. Uh, it, it, so be brave, my friends, and type in the comments. Anyway, raising littles. And I want to talk wider about family dynamics and healthy family, but particularly the concept of littles in the midst. And by littles, we mean those who are zero to about 11, 12, but pre-high school. And Debs is an early years educator. Was, yeah. is? Yeah, I was. Um, 20 years ago, I did a, a teaching degree. And then I became um, an Ofsted inspector of early years. So for those overseas, that is, she was a school inspector. inspector. Yes, yeah. she was the scary lady that kept all the teachers right. Yeah. So yeah, so she knows her stuff is the long and short of it. So really, we're just going to ask, the three of us are just going to ask you questions. Yes. So I think it's interesting, as we chatted through this as, as a group of women, it's interesting where our conversation went. Mm -hmm. And yes, we want to give some top tips in terms of the raising of Christian values and what connects a child to Christ at a very young age. But we ended up talking about 
the kingdom of God being a hierarchy. Yeah. 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 And a hierarchical fam- family. Yeah. And that sense that God sets himself up within a family where he is the boss of the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't this a delightful thought for children? <laughs> yeah. But that, <laughs> no, yeah. that whole concept of whether you're talking as God, the king of a kingdom, or God, the head of a family, mm-hmm. you are talking hierarchy. Mm-hmm. Now, that mm-hmm. is... A very difficult word in a modern day context. Yes. But what that immediately brings us to as we start this is boundaries. Yeah. Because hierarchical or kingdom or God at the top or, or God in any way is a God of healthy, restorative, redemptive boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And the God who puts frameworks in place for our utter flourishing Mm -hmm. and that sense that God disciplines those he loves and therefore as parents we discipline because we also love and the boundaries is the conversation we want to have particularly because of what you saw in your early years teaching where children would come in particularly in our modern context with no boundaries Mm -hmm. so let's have the boundaries conversation here yeah no boundaries and you know and you saw that even even with the parents and i remember being a child at school and if something had happened i remember always being upset that my mum would back the teacher mm-hmm. oh yeah but she did mm-hmm. and i knew if i was if if my teacher had pulled my mum aside to have a little word about me there was going to be a conversation at home mm-hmm. yeah. whereas for me in that position as an educator, I found more often than not that a conversation to a parent about a child's behavior would then lead to conflict and challenge. Mm-hmm. How dare you tell my child yeah. what to do? Yeah. And, and, and that was how children, and that is how children are being raised. Very much um, that there can be no challenge, there can be no yeah. consequence. And child, teachers, no longer have authority Mm -hmm. and that's because the parents don't interesting yeah and the parents children would come they'd come i was um, a nursery teacher i was assistant head teacher of two primary schools but predominantly my um role was in early years and children would come with no life skills yeah Mm -hmm. um you know from basic potty training to just knowing how to eat a meal but a complete inability to hear the word no. Mm. It mm. just was not a word that they could manage yeah. mm-hmm. because actually that is, you have to work with children to build an understanding of what that word means and grow in them a tolerance and an understanding that mm. life isn't always going to go their way. Yeah, yeah. Really good. And part of my role was probably establishing and putting in place some boundaries that should have maybe started at home mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. um but they were missing yeah and we we have a generation of young children that actually don't know how to navigate feelings mm-hmm. don't know how to self-regulate mm-hmm. and don't know how to even just behave mm. because the boundaries are not there it's so interesting you say that because i actually haven't even seen that before but when your parents from a young age i remember the most scared i would be or the most uh oh i've definitely done something <laughs> wrong here is when you i would, don't know where she's going with this is yeah. when you would back what the teachers had said because yeah. usually you're right yeah. as parents you're like that teacher needs fired. They've not done a good job or they haven't seen something correctly mm-hmm. or they don't know the kid well enough to understand that's yeah. their way of mm-hmm. learning or all that sort of stuff. But actually when you'd, so it kind of built up a slight rebellion, I think in some kids and you see it, they, they rebel against the teachers because, well, my mommy says, and I'm sure you probably get that mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. But actually I knew I'd, uh oh, I need to stop talking in class because mm-hmm. my mom agreed with the teacher there, yeah. which was, mm-hmm kind of rare because usually it was a fight the other way Mm -hmm. um but no I 
Can, can we work back from some of the issues we see in society in our adult population to understand why we started here with boundaries and God who is the king of a kingdom or the head of a family. Yeah. So we're, we're dealing in, with a society that has lost the concept of absolute truth. Yes. And that's yes. well uh, researched. And the diminishing of any sense of um, uh, anybody else being able to shape your world with truth. Yeah. And we talk about my, what's my, my truth, truth or mm -hmm. what's your truth. Mm -hmm. Like you get to mm -hmm. pick that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, in other words, we are framing society completely outside mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And we are raising people who find it almost impossible mm -hmm. to transition into the kingdom of God and the concept of absolute truth or the inerrant word of God or the authority of the boundary of mm -hmm. scripture. And that starts right back in the home, not in the sense of um, the fear that some of us were raised with in a highly mm -hmm. disciplinary culture, which it, which mm -hmm. we were trying to correct, I think, the excesses of that yes. where yes. children were seen and not heard. Yes. And that became problematic. But we have fallen off the other end of the, 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 the wagon. Now, I have you age 19. We are going to talk about teenagers in another episode a 15 and a 14 year old. I cannot be there every step of your journey. Mm -hmm. So what I have to put in, in your early years, when I'm raising you as littles, is the concept that some things are that way because I say so, yeah. or because God says so, yeah. because, respect because he elders. knows best, yeah. and that we're putting in a, fr a, a yeah. framework of boundaries where actually, no, you cannot do that, yeah. and no, you can't behave like that, mm -hmm. and no, that does take you for time of reflection on the naughty step where you have some time out to reflect, mm -hmm. Or that, you know, because we live within the framework of a good king mm -hmm. who has a set of ideals that you don't get to manipulate the edges of. And as adults, mm -hmm. God then says, uh, no, Emma, you can't do that. And yeah. here I am, 46 years old, and God is still saying to me, because I said so. Yes. yes. And yeah. he's still saying to me, no, Emma, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Yeah. And no, Emma, that is... The, uh, and here I am, married for years, children, mm -hmm. years in ministry, and God is still the boss. Yes. yes. And if I don't have that woven in... I raise a child unable to bow the knee. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Come on. I am that currently in the middle of the because I said so battle. Yes. Because um, you have a five-year-old. I have a five-year-old. She's five. She is six next month. Um, and it's, I had like, I suppose, been trying to hold it all. This is what happens, right? You get raised a certain way. Yeah. And then you think, okay, I'm going to correct some of the things that I didn't like. We right? all do that, don't we? And, we? and we oversteer in one direction. So ha so up until now, I have been a very ex explaining things. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So over communicating here, you don't need to get in trouble, but we need to have a chat, all mm -hmm. of those kinds of things. But I have realized that it's got us into a little bit of a pickle because she thinks she's very entitled to know exactly why she has to do something. Mm -hmm. And so that is exactly what I am dealing with on a daily basis. And our conversations at the moment are because I said, and she mm -hmm. does not like it. Mm -hmm. um, but even just watching that then at work, like at school and stuff, I, we were in her school, um, not in fact, I don't even know if I want to tell this story. Um, <laughs> and she was, she was really like adamant. She was, she was like even worse than she was at home. And because I've like, I'd almost been too soft with her. She was, she was shouting at me across the playground in front of her teachers. We are going this way. And, I, and I'm going, <laughs> we are going this way. Come here now. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in the car and, and, and I said, sometimes you just have to understand that you do yeah. not need to know the yeah. reason why I have said something. Yes. Because I have said it, you will do it. Yes. And it was in that moment that I, I realized, like, oh, we really need to, to fix this. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been a bit of a, like, mm -hmm. I haven't found that easy. Mm -hmm. Like, you no, know. No, it is. And I think as well, we are wired. It's natural instinct that when a child cries, 
that we respond. Yeah. yeah. You know, that is how we are made um, yeah. and how we nurture a child. However, when we are, we have to be mature in our responses mm -hmm. about when we're meeting that need, is it for the child or is it because it makes me feel better? Yes. And we've had these yes. conversations yeah. that sometimes children's emotions can can make us feel anxious like we don't want the child to feel disappointment mm -hmm. we don't want them mm -hmm. to feel upset we don't but actually life has disappointments yes mm -hmm. yeah life has upsets and it's a case of attuning i am here with you i know this doesn't feel nice mm -hmm. yeah but i am here while you feel it but actually feelings are part of life feelings yeah. are okay and we've said this time yeah. and time yes. again yeah. we serve a god of emotion yes yeah. he feels anger he feels love yeah. he feels every feeling a yeah. child probably goes through in a five minute yes you know yeah. cycle yeah. yeah and that is part of life but quite often we overly compensate yes. and overly meet yeah. the need mm -hmm. because we don't like how we mm -hmm. feel yeah. when they are in that distress mode. And on the discipline conversation, I mean, growing up, if I was ever disciplined and you're like, ah, no, and you'd be like, <laughs> why have I told you off? Yeah. And I would have to tell you, and usually it'd be wrong. I'd be like, because I did this. And you're like, no, that's not why I told you off. Why yeah. have I told you off? Mm -hmm. And I'd have to figure out, wait, why did I just get told off there? What was the real reason? Yeah. And it usually wasn't because of the thing I'd done. It's usually because I'd lied or, yeah. you yeah. know, something yeah. different or something a bit more overarching. Mm -hmm. And I had mm -hmm. my mind. And I think in that you learn, oh, I didn't see the whole picture there. The parents yeah. did or that yes. was the thing that made them upset yeah. mm -hmm. but relating that into the church like mm -hmm. you know even just conversations of oh what why are we doing this why are we worshiping god right now why am i going to church why is it every sunday kids mm -hmm. ask loads of questions mm -hmm. but it's being able to understand i don't know the full picture and i don't know the full reason as to why that may be upset mm -hmm. or the reason why we're doing something I don't always need to know, mm -hmm. but I kind of understand from such a young age that there was a bigger picture or there was a bigger reason that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And that's just because you were like, well, why do you think? Mm -hmm. And getting them to understand in that moment. Yeah. yeah. I think it, we're going to talk about some top top tips in a moment about uh, their a children a child's intimacy or your children's intimacy with Jesus and how you mm -hmm. curate that. But... I think we need to say that we don't neglect some of these macro concepts mm -hmm. which are putting in frameworks of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. That it is often, it, let, let's take the homosexuality issue that I now have, you know, that my, my teenagers say, and for years that was the big question, you would yeah. come home, mommy, why, why, why does, why does God say homosexuality is wrong? Why, why, why? I don't understand it in my culture because God says so. Yeah. And sometimes it literally is that yeah. because God says so. Yeah. Mm. We understand with that, especially now, and we'll probably get to that more with the teenage years stuff. There has to be a, there does have to be a reason because we need to then go back to people and explain yes. and give the right words in our culture as children. But when you're starting off with those principles and the key fundamental foundations, it has to just be because I said so, because God said so. Because the because these are the boundaries. These by are way. the boundaries. Yeah. So I think that there are two things. Within that sense of the boundaries of God, there has to be the sense of joy in it. Mm -hmm. And the for me, in the raising of them, every day of their lives, and I'm sure you're the same with your four girls and, and your girl, it is that sense of, I love you. Mm -hmm. It is a relentless journey of verbalizing value. Yes. Yes. A relentless journey of verbalizing value. It is. And I don't think you could underestimate the quantity of times you have to say they are valuable and loved. Yes. That that is as equally a part of the story of how God loves us as it is because I said so and here is the rules for best practice. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's absolutely right. So, I mean, I've told you, uh, well, more than once every day, 
for 19 years, I love you, I love you, I love you, you're so beautiful, mm. you're so beautiful. Yeah. You know, you're going to be a prophet to the nations, you're going yeah. to be a roaring success, <laughs> you know. And you've heard, how many times have you heard that? You're going to be a roaring success, you know. And, you're okay, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, But it, it frames everything. Yeah. yeah. From the age of like five onwards, you've had a catchphrase for each of your kids. Yeah. Yes. That no matter you know, what kind of thing they're up to or doing. There's a call in their life that they know is bigger. That you are speaking in, yes. How do you think that has shaped, like, your upbringing? Like, has it actually, do you actually believe with all of your heart that you will be a roaring success? I have gone into every (laughs) exam room. I have gone into every relationship. I have gone into every job, interview, anything. Unafraid and unshaken and unworried because I know I'm just there to show off or be a success. <laughs> Literally. I love that. That, I mean, that, is, so good. that, that, is, okay. that was my aim. Can, 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 I'm into yeah. nursery. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Well, I'm not I've, worried part, because I will be a success in life. Yes. It might not be, and I know that sounds a bit entitled, uh, but there was... There was <laughs> that is the other side of it. <laughs> that's the other side of it. But there yeah. was never a moment... No. You know, I didn't go into because I knew there were moments I fail. Yeah. But... You come out and be like, well, you're still going to be a success. Yeah. And it... Can can we talk... I hope you don't mind, and we can edit this out if you don't like it, but uh, if I talk more personally about it. When... uh, And the story, as I'm looking down at the camera, at our own journey. So, Jessica... um, You had a really tough time in some of the early years of primary school. There was a really bad bullying, and which really marked you. Mm -hmm. And... um, But at that point, we just couldn't get any maths concepts into you at all. Severely dyslexic, severely dyscalculia. So we, I mean, I never heard of dyscalculia. I'd heard of dyslexia, but I'd never yeah. heard, because I am dyslexic, I'd never heard of dyscalculia, this number blindness. And uh, my husband and I, David and I are well educated. And there was always a value, my, my mother teacher, mm-hmm. your teacher, you know, there's mm-hmm. a val- there was a value in our upbringing for education and, um, and a certain sort of education. And I remember it, your daddy and I sitting in the car outside the school after the educational psychologist had told us she will never have a maths qualification. Mm. She will never, she will never, she will never, she will never. And it was a list of she will nevers. And we had no grid for how to process that in that car. And I remember sobbing in the car going, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't, because our values were somewhere here. And here was, and here was a different truth. And I think it was at that point, I am going to speak a value here yeah. that is a little bit like Esther in, in scripture, who is dealing with a decree that is a lesser decree, that is a binding mm-hmm. criticism of, mm-hmm. at that point, the people of Israel. But I'm going to raise a decree, and of course you're my eldest, you will be a roaring success. And that's why we chose that as your decree. Mm-hmm. But I, your yeah. boy, the boy's got something different. But in all of that, there was a sense that it was because you were in a war zone. And then yeah. we had to we had to have you go into exams going, well, I can, I'm just going to show off what I know. And I think that's mm-hmm. why, hear me rightly, that's, I think that's kind of why I didn't, I mean, there were moments of arrogance, but where I didn't fall into the kind of arrogant side because... I had failed so many times, yes. so many times. Yeah. And you know, like in front of the whole class in primary school, oh, we did a maths test once in primary three, but I still remember it because yeah. it was such a significant point for me where I failed so badly and the whole class watched. The teacher made us sit down and do our big end of year maths test. And she said, as soon as you finished the paper and answered all the questions, get up and stand at the front. I was last sitting at the table, my whole class standing up watching me finish my test. I was on page one and they'd all finished. And I was still sitting there oh, and I was like, goodness. miss, I can't finish it. I can't finish, I don't know what to do next. Mm. And it was like, oh, I'm just never gonna get this. Mm. Now, you know, halfway through my journalism and law degree, clearly can do it. But it's because I was able to walk into those exam halls or, you know, walk through the rest mm-hmm. of like primary school mm-hmm. and my early years doing anything else in any other subject areas. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, no, it's okay, I'm a success still. Mm-hmm. You Just are. because I failed, I'm still going to be a success. You're so good in your voice and a prophet to the nations. But it is it just for all credit. So, but it, but it is that 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 stewarding the line in our children between 
the utter robustness of the discipline of the kingdom of God and the boundaries of the kingdom of God. So they're not finding out age 15 what there are absolutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the same time, you are so loved. And I think both of those have got to be vigorous. Mm -hmm. And what I watch is them out of kilter. Yes, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally agree. And how amazing it is for mm -hmm. you as a child to know that you don't have to have it all in control because mm -hmm the godly leadership that is parenting mm -hmm. is yeah. there for you. And, and the hierarchy of the family. And well. the hierarchy of the family is then in play. Yeah. And that's that's so important because as, as kids, if we had to work it all out, that is, yeah. we just can't. And that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the mm -hmm. fallout yeah. comes yeah. because we're putting children in charge almost yeah. of yeah. their own destiny future yeah. and yeah. it's it's a it's a godly parenting principle mm -hmm. yeah. to declare it and such an honor and a privilege to speak into yeah, it is. the lives yeah. of our children and mm -hmm. um yeah. you know and olivia had a my second she's 18 had a, a similar sort of story in primary school because she was um deaf mm -hmm. and needed glue ear surgery and so she was behind in in all of her phonics and she's always felt on the back foot yeah mm -hmm. and a decree for each ours is a song it's just yeah. the house that they're yeah, in the house, yeah. <laughs> yeah and each one had a song written for them and it still gets sung over them yeah and um, even now as you know moving into adult children mm -hmm. it's their song it's the the declaration over them and it's sung over them um, and that is internalized and Olivia just did a final exams and she's genius. She's a very clever girl, isn't she? But but yeah, she is and she almost surprised us a little bit. Yeah. And I, I was, was like no, I, I think I yeah. did that too. And I was like, what? I don't know. I was like, Liv, I'm so sorry if if i if you felt that I wasn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And she said, Mummy, you know what? And I think you were at, at the house yeah, was. Mm -hmm. and, and I cried because she said, I know that even if I fail all of these exams, I will come home, walk through that door and still be loved exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that felt like a, oh, thank God I moment. <laughs> and then I was like, but you won't fail. But, <laughs> but her, her identity was not in. In, in that. It was, she was so secure of who she was in the house that yeah. just like you said, she was mm -hmm. able to stand on shoulders mm -hmm. and and borrow yeah. from the confidence that that her parents mm -hmm. were yeah. were able mm -hmm. to give it and that's that's mm -hmm. our privilege and yeah yeah is there ever a level of like over encouragement like i feel like my mum's generation would be like oh you don't want them to be do you know what i mean don't over encourage it, it don't yeah. spoil the child yes, don't yeah. spoil the child P personally i don't think so but i think that's in the context of a family environment where we where we have used the naughty step as our you will go and sit in the bottom step and you will think about this mm -hmm. and then we will have a conversation about it so you've heard the woman preach on a platform you know she can be scary <laughs> <laughs> but, but for me for me the sense of you want a lifetime mm -hmm. of the verbal ringing yeah. in their ears it's like you said in our marriage conversation that 10 years later after giving yeah. birth, you are dining out yeah. on the kindness of your husband. And I think the same thing applies that, mm -hmm. yeah. um, is it not as adults that our deeper healing needs are often in what was said to us? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yes. So I don't think I can be repetitive enough in yeah. that. And for me, it's, for me, it's not just the verbal to my children. It's, let's talk about the Valentine's Day. Now I know yeah. Valentine's Day is a massively artificial piece of nonsense in many regards, but we utilize it to write and daddy writes to you and I write to the boys. Uh, and they, I mean, uh, the Peter's like, oh, I don't need this, but I have made him keep them because I know one day yeah. he will read all the Valentine's. You are. Yeah. Oh. you know a giant oh. of a man spiritually yeah. you are great fun to be around of jesus shines out of you i love your kindness and so for me it's the verbal and the written just as god speaks to me and then i've got the logos written word of god i think it's the same for them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I also know how a man should write a Valentine's Day card because my dad has done it for me for years and it's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I wonder... Oh, dear love your husband. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. But I, I, I do wonder, is there a difference though between I love you sort of encouragement mm -hmm. and here's this amount of money or the, you know, you, the over or was it the over encouraging you were saying? Yeah. Or the, you know, the difference between the kind of <clears throat> leniency of, oh, no, don't worry, I don't want to hurt you, I don't want to offend your feelings. Like you were saying, actually, sometimes there needs to be a sharpening there. The but there's a difference yeah. between, boundaries. Yeah. I love you yeah. and feeling safe in the home and feeling yeah. loved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to, here's money. Oh, can I have some more? Yeah, of course, of course. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Like, or I've always got you, or this sort of stuff. I, there, I think there is still a difference there because there's different kinds of encouragements and different ways we accept. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's back to boundaries, as it you is, said. It is, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, ba it's back to boundaries. And I think mm -hmm. my girls, I would hope, understand that their dad and I, in our relationship, mm -hmm. is a priority mm -hmm. in our lives as mm -hmm. well. And they are an extension of us yeah. and, and who we are. And we are a family unit, but him and I are mm -hmm. here and they are here. Mm -hmm. And that's not that they're not valued and they're not as important. It's not a value it's statement. It's not a value it's statement. Not. statement. It's a function statement. It's a function yeah. statement. Mm -hmm. And I think for them, like I've, I said earlier, mm -hmm. they love that. They feel secure in that. Mm -hmm. And actually just and when you were talking about giving the money, I was thinking even something as simple as my, I just needed a moment's peace when they were little. And let's just recognize how, raising littles is Tough. hard years. Yes, they are. They're demanding yes. years. And my mm. little break was wandering around Ikea and getting a coffee in the cafe and putting them in the ball pit. And wearing the lovely little thing round my neck, the buzzer, that tells me when to come back for them. Yeah. But it was my little yeah. alone time. Oh, the buzzer went. My name went over the tannoy. And, you know, can Deborah Finch please come back to the ball pool to collect her children? And I was like, I've been here five minutes. And I, I went and Grace didn't want to be in the ball pool. So she said she felt sick okay. and she got to come out. And so I was like, okay, well, what did I say we were going to do after you'd played? Mm -hmm. We were going to go and get ice cream. Mm -hmm. I said, let's do that. But Grace, you feel sick. So it's not a good idea to have ice cream <laughs> when you feel sick. <laughs> and and I, as, as awful as it is, um, she sat and watched her sisters all eat mm -hmm. ice cream. Mm -hmm. And she didn't get to eat ice cream, even though she had a few tears because she felt sick mm -hmm. and so she I was she was learning that actually my words matter too mm -hmm. and you know mummy will follow up with her words and what I say yeah. matters too but that the relationship between us both was one of trust truth honesty but also consequence yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that following up with the good. words because that means you know that can go for not just the compliment side of, oh, mommy, you promised to get me ice cream and then never did, sort yeah. of thing, but follows up on punishments. If you just continually make threats, then you, you use the through. threats as a kid. Yeah. And you're like, well, she said you, that before, it's not gonna mean have, anything. You have to follow through she on punishments. Yeah. Yes. You can't say, oh, again. you're gonna yeah. go to the bottom step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no empty words. And then words. keep getting I, and another top I, I have to say, yeah. in the days, I mean, smacking it is banned in Scotland. Yeah. I don't know about the nations that you're watching from, but yeah. hitting yeah. your child is outlawed here. Yeah. Now we can have a conversation about that. We won't. But actually, I remember when I was first caught lying, and I, mm -hmm. I use the word caught lying, my father, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, it was what, you know, it was a yeah, hit yeah, yeah. and it was deliberate. It wasn't done in, in, in anger. He was very meticulous and deliberate about it. I remember to this day, the consequence mm -hmm. of that and the value that truth was given in our house mm, because yeah. of how he explained it to mm, me. Yeah. And that it was it was literally a moment seared on my mind. And I actually take it as a good moment yeah. because it wasn't done in this rash retaliation. It was done very thought through. You will understand 
that there are consequences when you break the values of the kingdom of God yeah. mm -hmm. and truth telling is a high value. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. In terms of littles, I think, because we, we need to talk about their relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think there's two things that we want to be mindful of here. There is just the, the, the disciplinary patterns or the repetitive rhythms mm -hmm. of introducing your child to a scripture verse yeah. Yeah. or introducing your child to a Bible story or that sense of you just need to learn truth. Mm -hmm. And that actually is often very devoid of relationship. Yeah. And that is a, a massive part of how I think we, it's why we get asked, how do you raise children? Mm -hmm. And because people are saying to us, in essence, this is my read between the lines. Mm -hmm. I know how to do the read the Bible every day. Mm -hmm. I know how to do that. We're going to say our grace for our meal. And thank you, Jesus, for the food. How do I shift from the discipline of read this scripture, which is important because, you know, that will hold you over a lifetime mm -hmm. to the actual place where Jesus is a relationship. Because I actually think that is the difficult thing to achieve. The, the rules of here's a scripture, learn a scripture, sing a scripture, mm -hmm. read a verse, pray a prayer. Because when I watch children pray, um, it's that sense of God bless mommy, God bless daddy. Mm. And you can accidentally uh, create God to be uh, like a slightly like a vending machine in the sky in the nature <laughs> of childhood prayers. Yeah. Who are we going to pray for? You know, and it, it's done in that kind of, you know, what do we want to ask God for? And I find a lot of the childhood um, material lacking in a relational quality, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So l let's jump into what what I did with you, and it came because we're back to the maths class, the dyscalculia, the number blindness, and I am going pr probably from my own. Where was Jesus in the middle of all of this? Where was Jesus in the middle of all of this? And I don't even know that I was expecting you to answer. And it's like right over there, mommy. Well, you said to me, in my pencil case, he's locked away. I don't know whether you remember that, but it was that sense of <laughs> Jesus wasn't present. Mm. Like, like we hadn't thought of him being relationally present yeah. in the yeah. maths class, yeah. where actually the greatest trauma was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yet in deeper healing, what are you continually doing? Putting Jesus, Jesus back in the memory. Yeah. Yeah. So it suddenly, it like clicked, oh, hang on a minute and then I remember changing tack and saying no 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 where was Jesus in that room yeah, yeah. like literally days after it happened yeah. yeah yeah and you then said nowhere and I'm like where was it was quite a heated conversation where was Jesus in that where was Jesus in the mass class and you suddenly clicked into this place where you said he was sitting on my chair and I was sitting in his lap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. And I was doing my mass class mm -hmm. in his lap. I want to cry. I have done every, you've, all three of us have gone into every exam, test, situation, camp away from home. First light, we sit down and we're like, okay, Jesus is right here. Where is Jesus? Where's Jesus? He's right here. Okay. Now everything else come into play. Now what? I mean, particularly when we're, when we're it's just because we just don't, had children do exams, where you you go in and you cite Jesus in the examination hall before you do a thing. I know that's more teenager, but even as a kid, in like places like nursery, if your kid's struggling yes. to show up to nursery, I can yeah. imagine it works. I have no idea, no experience, but I can imagine it works the same. We were like, go in, find Jesus and make friends. Have that as a foundation. Where's Jesus? Because he's your father, he's your friend. He's there. It's the ever presence of him as a relational figure rather than just here is here is the truth by, by rote. So suddenly that value that we started with with hierarchy and boundaries and because I said so in discipline layered with I love you, I love you, layered with the Jesus who is present, mm -hmm. relationally present, suddenly you have a greater package. So by all yeah. means, you're doing your prayer and you're doing your Bible reading, you do this. But that's where we then developed the whole, where is Jesus in the room, which people have heard us talk about an awful lot. Yeah. And because it was utterly necessary to anchor him relationally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you weren't thriving. 
Yeah. Yeah. And for them to access him relationally. Mm-hmm. Yes. And not just us. Through yeah. us. Through so, us. Yeah. Yes. It's a choice they make. They yes. Know they do it. And, yeah. that, and that's part of the training the child, yeah. that they get to have a relationship with him. And find God on their own. And find him. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, not completely. And understand that he is present for them, just mm. as the same present in. Not to mention the spiritual gift of sight. Everyone asks me, like, because I see in the spirit, but everyone yeah. asks me, oh, how do you start? How do you start? And mm-hmm. I have all these different reasons, but I actually think that's probably one of the most fundamental. From such a young age, yeah. I had to find Jesus in the room. Yeah. I had to, otherwise there was no way I was going to cope in that room without yeah. him. Yeah. So I had to see him. Even if I was like, no, it's my imagination. No, make mm-hmm. like make up mm-hmm. how you think Jesus. Your sanctified right imagination. Yeah, yes. And yeah. I was like, I need to find him right now. I make yeah. a pillar, and I need him. Not mm-hmm. mommy yeah. tells me I need him right now. And it is so powerful. We were working quite recently with a little girl mm-hmm. who um, we were doing some Emmanuel with. And she was just, just to say, Emmanuel is the deeper healing program that these guys are experts yeah. in. Yeah. And we were just actually casually talking about um, like her past week at school. Yeah. And how she said to me she didn't really like school. It was boring, and there was a boy that sat next to her that was super annoying, and did it in. So we were just you know having conversation back and forward. And um, I had sent them some homework as a family just to mm. ask, where is Jesus in the room? Yeah. So when you go to school, could you just ask, like, just have a look around and yeah. see if you can see him? I got a text from the mum that night saying that they'd all been in an uproar yeah. because the, the, the little girl had asked, Jesus, where were you in the room two days ago when this person was being particularly annoying? Yeah. And Jesus had sat on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, what I loved about it was it's not something that yeah. we would ever have seen Jesus doing as adults, <laughs> but yeah. it had absolutely transformed how she saw the classroom, Yes, how she was able to um, even view what had happened the previous week. And he, like, he just is so beautiful when he comes to children and he comes in a way that is just so relational to them. Yes. Yeah. And she completely understood that Jesus sitting on this little boy was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And that no longer could he be annoying because he was being sat on <laughs> by Jesus. I love, I, love that. I love it. I don't I don't know about I mean you and I were we, we were born in church w- yeah. with parents who were successful in ministry. We grew up in mm-hmm. successful ministry homes, known ministry homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, even famous ministry homes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about your journey, but you know Church, it, it, the church was a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it was a choice. It was just what we did. It wasn't a choice. It, no, no, it wasn't a choice. <laughs> Let's be honest, it wasn't a choice. It was what we did. And we were very visible yeah. as the lead family in our respective communities, yeah. you and I, mm-hmm. and the behavior that is expected that came with it. Mm-hmm. And that sense that um, how long did it take you and I to own Jesus as our own. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Adulthood. A long time. Most of the time. Yeah. And I notice, I mean, people go, it must be more than where is Jesus in the room? Uh, no. No. No, it's really not. It's actually, and how much it's just staring into his eyes can completely change everything. It, it, but it is that sense that you, you and your brothers have found him outside of, us because I can't be yeah. in your school yeah. if that yeah. makes sense yeah so you're there was still a journey and I think I'll talk yes. more about that in the teenage one and how you raise teenagers mm-hmm. but I think yeah for sure even just like little ones send them to crash send them to Sunday school send them to SU camps CU camps the Christian Union camps, whatever it is yeah you know you send them away but in those places they're without parents yeah they may have been told to go there but some of the best encounters are there because they don't need to perform for their parents. That's they don't true. need to show up as the good Christians. Yeah. If all the, you know, at those kind of camps, those kind of Sunday schools, they can happily sit at the back if they want to, because mm-hmm. mommy and daddy aren't watching them. And you know, when you're in those little moments, I remember the best encounters being there. Mm-hmm. I've even mm-hmm. spoken to, yeah. you know, father about it as well. He had his first Jesus encounter when his parents weren't there, and he was raised strict church as well. Yeah. But showing up and actually being like. Ooh, I can do this by myself. Let me just test it. Yes. And as kids, you're curious. So you do. You're like, what's going on mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. And I'm not being watched by adults. So does it work? So, I mean, I would also give that as a recommendation is send them away. Not only is it independence, 
this independence with God and godly encounters because yeah. they do it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we can be guilty of putting God holy for children in the because you should yes. parenting. Yes. So he is no longer relational. But the same way as we parent because you should, we also parent in relationship and communication yes. and love. Mm. And whenever we bring them up, which I think is probably some of our experience of a God because you should and don't question it. Yeah. He was never relational. And the Jesus in the room tool is just si as simple as they get to build relationships. For it themselves. is that. It, it is absolutely that, yeah, isn't it? It is absolutely yeah. that. Yeah. What, one more thought, uh, you know, as we, we always said these were going to be half an hour long, but look at, look at us wittering away. <laughs> you did have with your daughters a list of scriptures, mm. very practical, that you felt children could work. Because not all scriptures they can understand, work with, you yeah. know, no. understand. Talk, talk, talk us through that. Yeah, and I think the main, <laughs> the main wrestle for me, mm. and one of the biggest challenges was how do I stop them fighting? You know, I've got <laughs> four kids close in age, if all four girls, and you know they squabble and yeah. and and they would fight, and part of their growing in themselves was they had to learn how to navigate close relationships, mm -hmm. and they had to do do it in a way where even in difficult circumstances that the values of the home yeah. were the values of the home yeah. mm -hmm. and so we sat down um, once they were old enough and we all wrote scriptures <laughs> that of things we that they felt they needed to work on because all children are different yeah and you know one can be quite prone to anger and is always you know the first to hit or slam a door <laughs> yeah. and you know another one you know will twist the truth a little bit and manipulate yeah them. so they picked things that were specific to them but the main the main thing that we wanted to do together was in luke do to others how what you would have do, to do yourself to yeah. mm -hmm. and that that was the biggest thing and also be kind and compassionate to one another Ooh. and we we have a little bit of a different story um in our family because one of our daughters is disabled yeah and so my girls have had to navigate huge things that probably the average child wouldn't Doesn't, have yeah, to true. um and their relationship with G finding Jesus was so mm -hmm. important and essential because there were times when they really needed in the family to see he was there mm. yeah. and to feel his presence and to know mm -hmm. that yeah. he was there. And they had to go on that journey with us for the miraculous mm -hmm. and just for the, they needed a different level of compassion. They needed mm. a different level of understanding mm. and a different level of faith and their testing was big. And, um, Part, part of the wrestle for Luke and I was that we didn't want want their experience of childhood to be one where this is our, our circumstance, so it has to be this way. Yeah. They had to feel in some way that they were choosing that with us and that they were part of that journey. Yeah. And I have to say, my girls are wonderful girls. Yeah, they are. And that's not necessarily down to their parent, even though I'm sure it did. <laughs> <laughs> But, but they are kind and yeah. compassionate. And um, just like we said in an earlier episode about finding a kind yeah. man to marry, yeah. um, our family value has been you will always be kind to yeah. one another yeah. and you will always one. show compassion to yeah. everyone in this house, mm -hmm. even when you don't understand why. And those scriptures were written out with little hands and they were put on their doors. And just like your mum did with you, when you know arguments and things happened there was conversation about what do you think went wrong there yeah what what could we yeah. change yeah. and i think those conversations are important and they weren't allowed to say sorry without saying what they were sorry for yes, yes. Really same, good. we have the same thing it's not okay. just sorry you have to mean it yeah and you have to act like you mean it yeah Acting skills were mm -hmm. on point. born there. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> no, no. But you had to give a reason why as well. Yeah. Because it's easy to act. Yeah. No, I'm really sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Because you know it would shut it down quickly. Yeah. But because it, it does. No, I really, really am yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But no. Yeah. But 
yes. but being sorry for the right thing yeah. was important. Yes. Yeah, that's really and because you understand the lifestyle. It, it, it is a the why life. am I telling you off and why are you sorry? Yes, yeah. exactly. And a complete Jesus lifestyle in the home. It's not just a weekend thing. It's not yeah. just a hobby. Even if you were brought up as you two were and as I currently am, and you as well, actually, your yeah. daughter, fully in the church, it still has to be, you know, an mm-hmm. every single day mm-hmm. lifestyle. It we is. have a scripture on the back of our door yeah. that we wrote and that we understand. It's funny to the, the kind of the telling off of between siblings. If <laughs> she will oh, laugh no. at this, but whenever they are mean to each other, to this day, I, what do I say? Look at that person <laughs> in the face, you are unkind, and tell them 10 things, things that you like, like about, about them. That's really good. Go now. And you get the you get the absolute stubborn resistance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your ears look I nice like too. your big toe. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm making it 15 now because you <laughs> didn't do it right. We have played that. <laughs> you know. And so I've had to coach them at the kind of things you would say, you're the best brother anybody could have, what she said, you know, oh, yeah. you know that kind of thing, you know, and learning that, no, 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 no. For every one wrong thing, you're going to say 10 nice things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very much a part of our... Yeah. 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 And if you have, yeah, if you have siblings being clear they're your best friends and they're the ones that are going to What do I say? They are a gift of God to you. They are the gift of God to you, your siblings. They were that. (laughs) God didn't get it wrong when he put you in a family together. (laughs) The boys fall out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, raising littles, the final thing I would say is I am amazed that we expect our children to hit 15, 16, 17, and suddenly come into church worship yeah. and to worship like we worship. Yeah. It is vital that our children watch us worship. Yeah. yeah. In the home, yeah. in the corporate church mm-hmm. environment, that they are with us mm-hmm. and that sometimes as mums and dads, we are extra extravagant in our a demonstration Mm. of worship Mm -hmm. that it is a full body participation sport if that's the right way to put it because you are modeling to a little person a value Mm. of worshiping a king yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and i I am not surprised we lose a generation from church Mm -hmm. not on did you did you teach them scripture and this kind of sense of quoting that that scripture you know uh, teach a child a way he should go uh, the way he should go and, and then he will never depart from it mm-hmm. like that is some kind of liturgical yeah. sense of well I, I told you a scripture and you mm-hmm. memorized it why yeah, have you yeah, departed yeah. from it well teach a child the way he should go is yeah. is a yeah. lifestyle of participation yeah. David models this to be fair the best of anybody yeah. I've ever no, seen no. he is at the front like he doesn't care if as a worship yeah. leader he is my favourite person in the room. To lead worship to yes, because he's responsive. <laughs> yes, Ali is one of our worship leaders, as you guys know. If you're a kid that struggles with honouring your parents or you have an issue with your children honouring, respecting you as a parent, yeah, but you have not demonstrated you honouring the king or respecting oh. the king or worshipping oh. the king, here she goes. Then oh. why on earth will child learn that that's the right thing and there is a hierarchy and there's something yeah. about the parents that they also... Yeah. respect and yes honor. yeah yes and often can i say that is in physical posture to oh, worship on your knees to worship you know I mean, just that's in, a whole other episode isn't oh it? it's a whole other worship. episode probably you know when we come to to raising teenagers this was raising littles mm-hmm. i hope you enjoyed it mm-hmm. i hope you're enjoying the journey of at the starks table and really <laughs> you're getting a window into our lives mm. and we are enjoying it and i hope you are enjoying it with us make sure you type in the comments uh, the, the, the take home lessons and we'll see you next time mm.